guidelines. Um, we tried to gear it so that we were going out with them after high tide, but the tide doesn't start running in our favour uh, towards Paul until a little bit later after Baltimore. But I can still see that the tide is still coming in. We've just gone through the tide lines, but there's certainly plenty of um, wave action on the rocks. Not as much as yesterday, but still plenty enough. Did you give her a few more legs? Yeah. When we get more room, I'll hoist out a bit of jelly. Okay. Right, that should not repeat things. So we're ready. To uh, meet it into Crosshaven. Um, Excuse me, Castle. <clears throat> well, we've made it into Castlehaven, and uh, as we came round the point, I got the binoculars out and said again, "Oh, there's loads of mirrorings. I can see boys everywhere." Turned out they weren't mirrorings. Um, if you can hear that racket in the background, there's a rowing race on today, and they're all lane markers for the rowings. So they've lifted all the mirrorings, so. We've had to come up around the corner, they said go up around there and then turn left and take a mirroring there. So we've done that, we've got no idea whose mirroring we've taken. But uh, basically where we were anchored before, that's in the middle of the race. So, mm. so if they do want us to move, we will move. And uh, once they pick all these up and the race is over, we're happy to go down and drop our anchor. It's not a problem for us. No, but, but, it's just that the... but our mirroring tool, Mr Swifty, did his thing yet again and saved our ass. So uh, basically what happens? That goes through the ring and then snaps, snaps it and leave, leaves the rope on the ring. So 
since it's a mirroring ring on top, that's what we use. But Mr. Swifty, great job. Oh, dude. but that was a rough passage. Yeah, it was the swell more than anything else. Um, I did have the Genoa out um, at one point, but and it was helping. And yeah, they just failed. Well, it's not only that; it means so the swell was so bad we couldn't even it, hold the Genoa. Yeah. I can't even hold it out. It anyway, just... our our friend Craig from Bangor said yes, he was down here a couple of years ago or something like that. And he came out a day or two after a big blow and he says he took a right beating. Well, I know what he's getting at. Yeah, we didn't get a beating, but we were quite happy to just do a shorter one today. Um, I wasn't really back in form. No. After five weeks sitting on our tushes in Baltimore doing nothing, I, I've sort of lost my race, not my racing, my, my yachting mojo a little bit. and. Uh, when I've been away from it for a while, it takes me usually about a trip or so to get back into it. Mm. But on this particular trip, we came out into massive swells and I had a little panic attack, I have to admit. I think, to some extent, um, it was also the fact that we've been under a lot of stress. Yes. So, for instance, um, we were on a, an anchorage just outside Shirkin Island and... Um, we had to move from there yeah. uh, because the winds had changed. The wind was forecast to be from the south or possibly the southwest. It actually turned to the southeast and Shirk and I became a big lee shore and we had to get off. But the thing is, we knew somebody else was there. So, and then we saw this yacht on the... On the rocks later on and the RNLI pulled it off and it turned out to be our friend. Uh, so we had, even though it was not our boat, we were still apprehensive for him. Yeah, you get very worked up. You hope he's all right. You hope his boat's all right. And you, you get very, very worked up. And then we then had to set out an entire day of like 15, 60 knot winds. They were huge. They were, they were force nine. Yeah. And so you got very little sleep. Yeah. Um, and then that went through. And then yesterday we did nothing else but get prep the boat. So it was like getting water, making sure my washing's done. And you said you felt a bit snippy all day. I was. I was snippy. I'm not a very snip. You know, I don't. I'm not normally a snippy person. But you were easily irritated yesterday. I was. You? I was yeah. very easy. And the main reason for that was I was tired. Yeah. You know, and um, you I, know. I put my head down last night, and I got about eleven or twelve hours. Boom, just like that. Yeah, but the thing is, when we decided to come out today, even though um, that anxiety was then. There was a little bit of carryover today. Plus, I think I still need more sleep. Yeah, probably, which is I got I got two hours sleep the previous night. Yeah. So 11 I last mean, cut, night. Cut me a break, I'm 60. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we are where we are. We're in um, Castle Haven. Castle Haven. I've got Gainer, right? So I'll be calling Conceal, Conceal next. But uh, the plan is we're, we're, we're heading east. We've had enough of being slammed and bashed and thumped and cracked. And um, even though it's not the decision I wanted to make. Or me. Um, because of I the, have not got back to my childhood beaches. I know. Because of the amount of swell that there was today. Now we know that the um, western shore of Ireland has got... It's, it, it, it's bleak. Well, either it's bleak, but also it's... Um, it's predominated by swell. Swell, bad weather, rocks and strong winds, which is why it's bleak, it's why nobody lives there. It's why the burn exists. I know. Well, you haven't seen the burn, it is flat rock with cracks in it and the only living things live in the cracks. I mean, there's like 20, 30 miles of this. Yeah, but the thing is... It's um, a strange place, isn't it? I know, it's a beautiful place, but the thing is, if it was swell today on, on this particular one... Look at the cliffs and more. It the would cliff, be... The cliffs of Moor are the biggest cliffs in Europe and they've been hammered out by the Atlantic. I know, regardless. Yeah, so I'm afraid we're not going to get to see any of that, much as we wanted to do it. Yeah. Um, the forecast, looking ahead, is blooming awful. Basically, yeah. <coughs> but, no, we're going to just try and make as many adventures as we can. Honest to goodness, you know what? You never know what you're going to get on this channel, because quite frankly, neither do we. Well, I know what I'm going to make in the short term. Bacon buddies. Yeah, you're damn right you are. <laughs> I'm over it. Well...
We haven't opened any cupboards yet, but during the passage there was a lot of noise from these cupboards. So I need to get a teacup out. Quite often after a rough passage we have the rough passage test. Oh, and it failed! And it failed! Did you Successful seal! <laughs> Look where it's gone, it's way in there! It doesn't normally sit way in there. Ah, oh, dude. Yep, tea bags have fell over. Do you know what? Considering the amount of noise that's being made in here, things have done pretty well. I'm quite impressed. Maybe it's these rattling back and forward, but it goes to show you why when we're at sea, we close everything. You know that thing on airplanes where they say, please be careful moving your opening the overhead lockers, things may have moved in flight. Trust me, they move on passage on this boat, I'm telling you. <laughs> well, we're back in Castle Haven. <laughs> we are, aren't we? And I had hoped to show you a uh, the cow in the tree. Hey! But unfortunately the um cow in the tree is for private viewings only. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of the land is marked for things like private property, do not enter, do not cross this land, and the cow is on the other side of those signs. So um the cow in the tree was out. Yeah, it's a bit So of a we shame. thought we'd show you some of the shops in Castlehaven. So we went on Google Maps and said we're about to the shops so we're not wandering around like two lost souls. It uh, turns out the nearest shop is Skibbereen, about five miles that way, so um, we're not showing you the shops in Castlehaven either. <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, I will say this, it is a lovely, idyllic little place. So if you like walking or things like that, and have got plenty of supplies... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't come here with an empty larder, that's not a good idea. <laughs> We've got a nearly empty larder, so our, our mission today is to move a few miles up the coast to Glandor, or Union Hall. There seems to be two towns, one either side of the estuary. Um, the shop appears to be in Union Hall, even though the thing's called Glandor. But we're going to go there and see if we can get some supplies, and then after that, it's to move on to Conceal. Yep, and just because um, we've made the decision and you know what, once you make a decision, decision you've just got to go, go on and do it yep. and not look back because... It, it doesn't look like we're going to do a lot of sailing today though. I know, it's really stupid. There's supposed to be a small craft warning on at the moment. Bear in mind, the small craft warnings cover a lot of ground, like half the island. Yeah, and of course the problem is just because inside, because this is the point of coming... Uh, on here. this side, yeah. this is a lee. Um, you know, further out there could well be a yeah. lot of wind. Go, go a couple of miles off, off, off shore and it could blow you sideways, but we're tight into the coast today and we'll not be more than about a mile off the coast because there's no point in going all the way out to come all the way back in again. I mean, we're going to go out three miles sideways and back in. <laughs> so, um... <laughs> But never mind, it's going to be interesting. Well, we hope so. Uh, but um, On the other hand, bear in mind the old Chinese proverb, may you live in interesting times. Hopefully it'll be a boring seal, because interesting ones... Well, there's been a few people around here who've had interesting ones recently. But, oh, Emily can actually see the pots. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. yeah. Beverly is currently trying to fix our impeller. Uh, <sighs> anyway, um... While we were here, I just wanted to offer a little word on mooring balls. And um, we had to come on to a mooring ball purely because of oh. uh, the race. Yeah, another top tip for Castle Leaven, don't arrive on its race, race weekend because that area down there... Just, Which is the great place for anchoring, by the way. The anchorage just fills up with racing lanes for rowboats and, and skulls and whatnot. And there's seven or eight racing lanes. So you couldn't, so we couldn't raid, uh, couldn't anchor where we normally do. So we had to come on to up at the mooring ball. Again, it was on the, you were on the helm, weren't you? I was on the helm. So, and so I talked to the, uh, I talked to the safety boat and said, where do we go? And he said, go up there, turn left, take a mooring ball. And he said, those two, that mooring ball there, he said, um, the boat that's normally on it, is away is 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 bigger than you and yeah. away <laughs> that was very true that's very true because about three hours later it turned up <laughs> so we had to move to another one they were very gracious about it they were very very nice and it was very, they were it was, they were lovely absolutely lovely about it and um so i said well where do we go and he said well that boat over there i said that, that marine over there is fairly new laid and it's a bigger boat than you so you'll you'll be fine on that one so we went there 
and they turned up while we had just crawled into our bunks for the night. And um, they were a bit less gracious about it, but we said, well, where do we go? And they said, well, there's that one there, newly led. And I thought, oh my God, not this again. But the thing is, I'll be honest, because it, uh, it was not good for us, but never mind, we'll come to another when, one. When the, when the tide changed and the boat sort of, you know, swings round a bit, there was a bumping noise at the back. It was another flipping mirroring boy. Yeah, you know? because the thing is, it was all right where we were, but of course, you twist around with the thing. The mirroring's obviously made for a smaller boat. And, uh, yeah. So um, do make sure when you go onto a mooring ball that there are plenty of space around you because especially when you're in a river like this one. Yeah. Um, and also, twist. If, and also, if you do have to manoeuvre in Castlehaven at night, I will warn you now, it is a pitch black. It is a, it's a looking for a black cat in a coal cellar at midnight sort of job. But it really is. There's no light here worth a darn. And all the race marks were still out. Which is why we went on to a mooring ball. So eventually we find another mooring ball thanks to the headlight on a stick torch we have and we grab that one and thankfully nobody's turned up to throw us off this one but every time a boat comes past I sort of swallow a bit and grip my teeth. I was wanting to go on to the anchor yesterday but it was absolutely throwing it down for oh, most of the day. It I was mean... it was biblical rain. It was, it was <laughs> pounding down it couldn't wait to get down onto the ground that rain yeah so uh that's why we didn't anchor in the end but never mind so we're going to go to glandor and hopefully anchor there yeah yeah let's get on with it bev right let's do that uh.